Good afternoon. I hope that you're all well on what would have been Festival Saturday. With our festival having to be cancelled for two years now, there really is a yearning to return to the celebrations we love as soon as we can. We hope that you enjoy this film today and that it brings back memories of festivals past and helps us to look forward to festivals in the future. Our festivals past have given Musselburgh a long list of honest lads, honest lassies and attendants worthy of thy name and thee. And this year we celebrate lots of milestone anniversaries. Congratulations to our Silver Jubilee Honest Lad and Honest Lass, Dean Bosworth and Gillian Steele, and their attendants, Alexander Cavers and Leonora Luca. Our Golden Jubilee Honest Lad and Honest Lass, Reno De Rolo and Elise Rutherford, and their attendants, the late Matthew Duff, Cameron Shiel, Margaret Cavers and Pamela Stewart. And our Diamond Jubilee Honest Lad and Honest Lass, George Innes and Liz Moran, and their attendants, the late George Bonthren, John Thompson, Janan Young and Jean Banks. It's a particularly special year for Alexander Cabers and his mum Margaret who celebrate their 25th and 50th year as attendants. Congratulations to you both. As you celebrate your milestone years in a way you could never have foreseen, we thank you for your friendship and for the parts you have played in our festival. At this time we also think of the family and friends of past president Sandy Russell who died in 2020 and past Sasher, Dr Alan Watson who died earlier this year. Around about now, our honest lad proudly carrying the borough flag, along with the honest lass, attendants and mounted supporters, would be galloping along the beach at Fisher Row towards the harbour, having marked the town's boundary. We would be celebrating in spectacular fashion, and we must remain hopeful that in 2022 we can gather to celebrate again. <laughs> of the Musselburgh Festival. Today we are going to take a very special trip down memory lane with the lads and lassies who are celebrating very special landmark anniversaries. We have our 25th Honest Lad and Lass, Dean Bosworth and Gillian Steele, or Yeoman as she was known back in 1996. We have Reno De Rolo and Elise Rutherford, or Whitaker, as you were known back in 1971. And last but very not least, we have George Ennis and Liz Moran, who are celebrating their 60th anniversary. Welcome, everybody. Lovely to see you here today. Thank you. 
Now, COVID has obviously meant that we've had to postpone our festival for a second year in a row. However, it's only right that these very special lads and lassies are given their moment to reflect on their time in office. So let's start with the young ones, should we call them, <laughs> if we can call them that. We've got Gillian and Dee. Um, Gillian, first of all, were you always destined to be a, an honest lass? Because of course your dad and your mum were honest lad and lass before you. I think the answer has to be yes. Um, I, I suppose I, I didn't have to do it, but I grew up from a very, very young age um, being around everybody and everyone that was involved in the festival and um, yes so I suppose I, I, I loved it I enjoyed being part of it um, so yeah I suppose it was kind of written in the stars a little bit that I, I was at least going to stand for Honest Lass at some point um, so yeah my dad was Honest Lad in 1964 my mum was Honest Lass in 1969 and also my sister stood as, as Honest Lass um, and was an attendant um, after me but um, yeah, so definitely. Did you feel pressure or was it something that you no, wanted to do? No, I, de I definitely wanted to do it. I definitely, um, yeah, I, I definitely wanted to do it. There was no kind of, there was no pressure from my parents or, or anybody else. It was just, um, it was me. And Dean, did you have much involvement before you, before you stood? I used to come and watch the horses and I'd be there at the Fancy Dress Parade on, on a Friday with my family. But I think when I was young, maybe about seven or eight, and I always remember Manti Nicky brought me here actually to try, try to get on, on a horse. <laughs> and it was Sandy Craighead that put me on this horse. And I think they had actually dogs here at New Hills. Um, and the gun went off. And I can remember my <laughs> pony reared up, <laughs> hanging from the neck. So that was my, my only, I think my only opportunity to be on a horse. And it took a long, long time to get back on. So. <laughs> Yeah, I used to enjoy it, but none of none of them were really that involved with the, the full week of the festival. So how did it come about that, that you stood for Honest Lad? I think, obviously, the, so the background itself was relatively quite sporty. Um, I was involved, I was Honest Lad at, in, sorry, at Head Boy at Musselburgh Grammar. Mm -hmm. So I think it was just, a, I was approached by the president at the time, Bill Elgin, and asked me if I would be, if I would be interested. And I said, yeah, I jumped at, at the chance. You had come through quite a difficult time as well. How did being honest lads help you? Um, I think it really sort of installs confidence. I think it's done for many sort of lads, possibly lasses as well. Um, I wasn't the quietest, as, as you well know, mm -hmm. really know but it allowed, it allowed me to give, sort of, it gave, it gave me the opportunity of being able to sort of have a public speaking and just meeting lots and lots of friends, even in Musselburgh and down the borders when we went down. And to this day, I've still got very close friends whether it be Jeb or Kelso, um, yeah, I've thoroughly enjoyed my year and the last 25 years. And to this day, your mum, I think, still has a heart attack every time you get in a horse, doesn't she, Janet? She's, um, <laughs> she loves a horse. Oh, she loves a horse, does <laughs> Janet? Yeah, my mum won't go anywhere near. I think it's <laughs> her favourite place on the Monday and the Saturday, on the Roman Bridge. Uh, again, up high, as far away as possible from any horse. I thought you were going to say in her shout. house. No, no, no. <laughs> well, probably. No, she'll come out, she'll come out. No, 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 she'll not go anywhere near me when I'm on a horse. Now, you pair went to school together, so did that make it even more special when you were elected together as Honest Land Lass? Ah, I think we were, we were good pals, so it's made it, it's made it nice over the years, you know, and we've, we've, we've stayed good, good friends for the last 25 years. Yeah, I think most of the time. I think <laughs> this year, I think we're both looking forward for our daughters to sort of ride with us yeah. as well because they're sort of similar Same age. age. Yeah. And I think not only having a quite a strong friendship with Gillian, we were friends with our attendants at times as well, and we've kind of kept in touch. Alexander's a good friend to me, and he was a he was a really good attendant for me as well. Election night. Now, even though it was just twenty five years ago, there wasn't really camera phones back then, so you know there wasn't kind of the Facebook posts that, that you might see nowadays. What do you remember about your election day and your election night? I remember a first dance. I think everybody will remember the first dance of Gay Gordon. I think that was for everybody. I don't know about the <laughs> about the last and last here, but yeah, I can remember the Gay Gordon. I can remember. I'm not. I don't get emotional that much, but I can remember being. A bit, a bit teary and stuff like that. I totally, totally got to me that that night. But I remember sitting in the carriage. I can remember going through the 
through the time. I don't think there was that many people actually <laughs> out there that we felt very, very important sitting on this carriage. But I think it's it's one of the biggest things that happens in your life because you're only you're only eighteen or nineteen when you stand for on the ladder lass. And all of a sudden you're thrown into this public election, do you know, and people are people are actually out voting for you or not. Um you know and it, it's quite a it's quite a scary thing. Um you know, and then you're standing there and there's a big crowd and they're about to announce it to everybody and, you know, it's, it's, it's a massive, massive night um, and, it, and it is, it does get your, your heart rate up, um, but brilliant as well, like, you know, to hear your name being called out, you know, when the honest last from 1986 is Gillian Yeoman, it's like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> it was more relief, wasn't it? Was a bit, I, don't, I don't know about you, but I think the canvassing as well. That's that was the that was the hardest bit. Right. A lot a lot of people knew about it, but there, there was quite a few people that didn't know as well. Mm-hmm. And I can I think I've told you this story. I remember canvassing, and I can remember we went to the door, and it was a, an elderly man that came to the door, and all he had on was a shirt. That was it. Wow. Um, <laughs> and that, <laughs> that's one of the memories. <laughs> <there>. <laughs> Just trying to keep his uh, sort of professional <laughs> and would you like to canvas and <laughs> yeah. Did he vote for you, do you know? I don't know, don't know. You don't know. I think we'll, I think we'll back so. to, his, uh, to his house after that. But any regrets? I mean, 25 years down the line, do you? None at all. None at all. All, all of worth it. All of it. Yeah. All worth it. Right, we'll catch up with you guys in a wee bit. Now, moving on to the 50th anniversary, Lad and Lass, Reno and Elise. Now, Reno, you actually stood the year before um, you were an attendant the year before, right. so was that what made you want to stand the following year because you had so much fun? Well, when I was first approached to be honest lad, it was actually Gillian's dad, Eddie, who came to my house with Davy Campbell and asked if I'd like to stand for honest lad. And unlike Gillian, <coughs> I hadn't been involved at all. I mean, I, I just wasn't involved in the crowd, the HTA, I didn't ride a horse, I rode motorbikes more. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> It was all new to me. Uh, I went to school in Edinburgh, so I wasn't even in a grammar school. So, it, you know, although I had lots of friends in Musselburgh, but uh, I just wasn't on that scene. And it was a bit of a shock when I was asked to stand, you see. And of course, I thought, oh my God, can I do this? I don't know anything about it. I don't know the people. But um, anyway, uh, I did decide to stand. Uh, there was not pressure, but my father had said, you know, it'd be really nice for the family because we are third generation Italians coming to Musselburgh. Um, it was nice the way we were accepted into the town and my dad was a great one for putting things back into, into the town. He was in the Rotary Club and the Old Muscular Club. So he said, you know, it's no pressure, but if you do this, I think it would be a nice thing to do. And even, it's going into another aspect of the thing, you know, I'm Catholic and our church, they never had an honest lad. So I, was, I would have potentially been the first honest lad from that church and the, the, the canon at the time said, again, no pressure, <laughs> but it would be nice if you did it, you know, and I thought, uh, did you not approach your priest for some advice before you stood? Well, no, he, he asked me to go and see him, the parish priest uh, or the canon, and uh, just said, you know, if you're willing to do it, we'll obviously we'll support you. It would be nice if you did it. But on the day uh, when I was actually on his lad uh, in the 71, there was a priest visiting from Ireland, and uh, he was on holiday and he was, with, he was in our church. And on the Kirkland Sunday, our, tr- our priest came with us, it was all arranged that he would go to Inverness and read a lesson, which again is our first, I think, for a long time. And this priest, his name was Father Crummy, funnily enough, he came with us and he witnessed all this and I was up there reading the lesson. I was really nervous because I thought, I'm possibly the first Catholic to read a lesson in Inverness Church and say, well, for me, <laughs> thought, oh, God. Again, no pressure, eh? I wonder I'm nervous, right? But anyway, it all went well, and when we went home, um, Father Tommy came up to me and he said, you know, I'm going back to Ireland on Monday. He says, when I tell them what I've seen here, they won't believe it. Because at that time, the troubles were on, mm-hmm. Ireland was having a terrible yeah. time. Mm-hmm. He says, they just won't believe this. He said, it's so nice to see how your community has integrated itself. So, you know, I was rather proud of that, and it was mm-hmm. nice. Mm-hmm. But I have to say that when I was, um, and Elise will back me up here, when we went to our election in 70, and we didn't get in, we weren't crying into our beer because we thought, great, we're going to get a chance to go round, try it out, meet the people, learn to ride a horse, and maybe next year we'll do it. So it was job. like a wee rehearsal sort it of thing. It was. So we weren't broken hearted, and mm-hmm. I was delighted for George uh, and Morag mm-hmm. as well, obviously. 
And Reno, can I just ask you, in 1971, how many free ice creams did you give away to, to the, the community to get yourself elected as honest lad? Almost bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a few. Yeah. And your, your company, uh, De Rose, have obviously supported the festival throughout and everyone's yes. very, still very grateful for all the support that Absolutely. your company gave us. It's a pleasure, we enjoyed it. Yeah. And Elise, what about yourself? How did you get become involved in it all? Um, Again, it was Gillian's dad. Gillian's oh, dad. A lot of answer. A lot of answer. It uh, came round one night. I was actually studying for finals at the time, and came and sat down and said, I "Would like you to stand for on this last one." Get away. <laughs> I, although I am a muscle burr, I call myself a muscle burr last now, but. Um, I went to school and I went straight to college. I was four years at college, which was the other end of Edinburgh. I didn't really have communication and relationships in Musselburgh at the time, so I didn't, didn't get involved in the festival. Um, certainly couldn't ride a horse. We were very similar that way, was, that we were kind of rookies at the whole <laughs> thing, you know. Um, but when I met Reno, there was a lovely bond um, going there that has lasted. 50 years, it's just been wonderful. Um, and both, as Rena says, you know, after we didn't get in the first election, like, it's actually quite good for you not to do that because um, you have to be quite grown up about it. Uh, and, um, and we said, well, that's okay. We'll go and we'll learn how to ride a horse and we'll, we'll watch and we'll listen and we'll, we'll learn and we'll have another bash next year. Mm. So we knew that's what we were going to do. Albeit that by that time I had finished college and it was a bit of, uh, bit of a nuisance, but we got there anyway. It was good fun, we thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. We never fell out. Not really, no. Wow, no. that must, that's probably quite unique. Really? Probably, because I, knew <laughs> that, <laughs> probably <laughs> because I knew that Reno was always late. Uh, oh. I got around for being late a few times. I think that I'll be around with Jillian and So was all always always running behind them, picking up, and here's a sandwich for you, you know, because ice cream has to be made. It just, you can't stop the process no. of mm -hmm. making ice cream. You absolutely cannot. And um, in Gillian and Dean's time, of course, their election night dance was at the Brunton Hall, but the Brunton Hall was actually opened and, and built the year that you guys were lad right. last together. That's right. And, and that led to something quite special. You got, got invited yeah. to an event. Can you tell George us George and Morag, who were lad last before us, and uh, Rena and I were told to get our whites on and go to the, um, the Brunton Hall. And it was the opening ceremony and it was the Queen Mother that was opening it. And she's tiny. She's a <laughs> I know, very she's small lady. So you saw this is, no. floppy hat going, you know. Um, she passed us. She didn't stop. I think she knew uh, what, who the Honest Lad and the Lass were and what they were about because uh, she would actually visit in and around Musselburgh quite often because her cousin, um, Lord Elphinstone, Lord and Lady Elphinstone stayed up uh, up the brae. Carberry. That's it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she, she knew um, the history of Musselburgh and the, and the Serene, So, But that was, a, that was a lovely day as well. Mm. And um, things like that happen to you during your year or even after. You have to um, attend different things. So. And, and you mentioned the year that, that you didn't get in, but can you remember the night when you did get in, when, it, when your names got read out? Fabulous. Absolutely oh, fabulous. Yeah, uh, but it was a strange night um, because we were related and happy because we had been elected. But also, my heart was breaking for those that weren't. Because mm. you had been there. Been there, done that. Yeah. Uh, one of the attendants was the daughter of a past honest lad who you would think that's a rubber mm -hmm. stamp <coughs> to become an honest lad, but it wasn't. And the other one, um, Margaret, had stood twice already. This was her third go. Yeah, and how sure. heartbreaking was yes. that? Uh, not just for her, but for her family. Mm -hmm. And as something else we should mention is uh, standing for a lad and lass, you have to realise it's not just you putting yourself up, it's your family. Mm -hmm. You need right. every one of your family there because involved. they need to be involved and support you in different ways. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, George and Liz, 60 years ago, can you believe it was 60 years ago? 
No, not really. I know they could not mirror, yes. <laughs> <laughs> not at all, not at all. We, have, we must mention that George did demand makeup when he entered the room today. Um, George, how did you get involved? How did you become Honest Lad? Well, unlike Pino, I knew what I was getting into. <laughs> uh, I had taken part in the 1956 round in the matches at Rugby, and uh, I played rugby in all the junior or the coach rugby was in the borders so we were in the borders every other weekend uh, so I knew quite a few of the boys that stood and got in not as friends but we became very good friends so uh, as I say 1959 they came and asked me to stand but of course I was too young uh, <laughs> you had to be 21 in these days uh, mm. So, uh, two years later, and this is what really, when you say when you've got friends, George Bonson was one of my best pals. I didn't know he had been asked to stand, he didn't know I had been asked to stand. <laughs> it was all two days before the nominations that the two of us sang. So, he worked in the, lo the local branch at the Royal Bank, I worked in the paper mill. So we were both local, looking for support locally. Uh, and as Elise says, when one doesn't get in, you really feel, and for George. Especially if really, you're really good friends with him as and well. Really, mm -hmm. I mean, we had came through school together, we, we went about together, we played rugby together. So it, it, it was a bit tough then, but he stood two years later and got in, so uh, everything worked out. But uh, I think, as we were saying, it, it really broadened your horizons. I mean, nowadays, they're so, shall we say, forward in their approach. I don't mean that in a pushy way, but all the younger honest lads and lasses, they, they seem to have far more going for them in respect to uh, confidence mm -hmm. to get up and speak. Now, they had a debate in society at the school, and yeah, I went to every one of the debates, and that was enough for me. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> when it comes to having to make speeches, obviously, uh, I think everybody gets a bit excited. You, you feel as if uh, everybody's looking for you to make a full part. <laughs> but do you feel, I mean, Dean mentioned that it helped his confidence. Do you feel it helped your confidence, your sort of life skills as well? I mean, I've gone on to do a lot of other things. And uh, became involved in a lot of other things, and I must admit, uh, it, it's, I've been never a, obviously been a town councillor uh, and lots of other things like that. And uh, these are the kinds of things you look back on and, and you, you say to yourself, well, if nothing else, I did contribute a little bit to the town. You should write a book, George. I think uh, it, would, it would be a top seller, certainly in Musselburgh. Um, Liz, can you tell us about how you became involved and how you were asked to stand for Honest Lass? Well, I think my, my sister had been an Honest Lass and I think, um, well, I think my dad was always wanting me to be an Honest Lass. I was never like my sister, though. She loved horse riding. I was terrified. <laughs> you were getting well with Dean's mum then. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was put on a horse probably from, from five years old and my sister used to have to take me trailing and I used to, if it started to trot, I used to start and cry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> when I was, um, when I stood for Honest Lass, my dad got me a nice quiet horse. So I knew my horse, so I was fine. Um, and I enjoyed riding after that. Good to hear. And um, obviously George was mentioning George, who was your cousin. That's so my cousin, so he yes. was he was in the official party. Was yes. it did that make it a bit awkward that you got in and he didn't get in or was it no, not I thought don't of think like so, that? We were all really friendly, weren't we? And even as as everybody was saying, you, you feel for the ones who didn't get in, but we all came good became good friends and we had a really nice time together. So how did election night differ back in 1961? What, what was the process? How did it all, all unfold? Well, <coughs> we didn't have the Brunton Hall. It was the old town hall. Yeah. And in these days, pub shut at 10 o'clock. It's a bit <laughs> like now, a bit <laughs> like COVID <laughs> times, George. <laughs> but for election night, they had a, a late license to 11 o'clock. So that made it 
worthwhile for all of the, the people to come to the dance <laughs> for getting a wee drink. Uh, but uh, going on to the balcony and seeing it, there was quite a crowd. Yeah, uh, we had to stand outside on the balcony, on the balcony, the balcony and make our speech. Is that the steps where they do the town flag on a, on the Saturday Aye, now? Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. yeah. Uh, but uh, other than that, I think, I don't know if I was just speaking before we came on camera, your mind wanders back to things, but that particular night, everything seemed to just be up in the air as, as far as I was concerned. You got in and, yeah. uh, you know, went on to the dance. and uh, Just the excitement of it. Yeah. It's not so until that. later, is it, that you reflect on it, because as Gillian said, at, at that age, you're so young. That's right. It, I mean, I was only 18. Mm-hmm. And I we think were old days then. Yeah, I was 22. Yeah, I was 21. So, mm-hmm. yeah, we're, we're the older ones. Experienced. Yes. We were experienced, <laughs> yes. Well, the drop to age group, yeah. why it was 21, uh, apart from, in these days, you've got the, the key of the house, supposedly. Yeah, that's right, key of the <laughs> you know, uh, But you had done your national service, mm-hmm. and you, you ah, were out with that by, right. you were 20 if you had gone away at 18. You were lucky. Uh, yeah. So, uh, it, yeah. That's why 21 was a, an age where they felt yeah. suitable to, to be See, I always stand. thought it was because they said that, that the girls were more mature, so they could stand when they were younger, but the boys didn't mature until they were in their 20s. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's very part of it. That's <laughs> perhaps was part of it as well. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that story before. But it's not like that now, it's been changed. No, so no. It is, I think it's, it's 18 for both. I think it's it's potentially. I think they're still working on that. Um, you can be as old as you want, and yeah. you know. I think I think the young ones have got more confidence than what we did. I would agree. Yeah. yeah. But do you feel yeah. it helped your confidence? You said you don't really like public speaking. No, but I don't. I, and I must say, Billy Love helped me with nearly all my speeches. I mean, he was terrific. Yeah, yeah. Um, we did have terrific so. help yeah. and a good support. Do you kn- do you not think that nowadays um, horse riding is more open? It's more accessible to more people. Therefore, you know. Yeah, um, I mean, it was for youngsters. Was they can go horse riding and then become really attached to it. We've got the Crusaders, and there's a tremendous amount of youngsters mm-hmm. uh, attached mm-hmm. to that um, mm-hmm. riding, riding, training themselves, and what. So there's far more to me looking back and looking forward there's far more interest now in horse riding amongst the youngsters mm-hmm. that they they seem to be more capable i mean we oh. were, yeah, oh, when we went horse riding <laughs> you know, was, uh, <laughs> we went round this paddock and uh, scared as anything and i always remember uh, mrs beck shouting to reno to Sit up, you're like a sack of potatoes in that. Uh, in that Heels mod. down, Heels <laughs> down, <laughs> to the oh, funny. And Reno kept saying, uh, "Where's the gear stick? Where's the gear stick for this horse?" <laughs> no clutch. <laughs> but it doesn't we, have a motor, and you know I can't work it. So yeah. we uh, didn't have that situation as such because, as Elizabeth was saying, she had her own horse, mm-hmm. but they also had another horse as well, uh, so. Uh, they had two horses, so we, we did do a bit of oh, riding. Yeah. Uh-huh. But we were put through our paces with Sandy Fortune. Oh, yeah, he took me out in the day. He had us <laughs> up in uh, White Creek Field, and when you think Beck shouted at you, mm-hmm. Sandy Fortune, <laughs> yeah. really, he was first World War Cavalry. <laughs> 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 uh, it was, they did teach you know, us. We really taught us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. don't know. Him and Alec Maxwell was another one. Eric. Uh, oh, yeah. Eric Anderson. Eric Anderson. So that's yeah. why you're all such good horsemen. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. beautiful to watch you sitting yeah. on these big horses. Yeah. So you've been trained well. <laughs> or I, scared I right my own horse, but put me on a strange horse and I was terrified. Yeah, yeah. but they are unpredictable, aren't they? If, yeah. you, if you don't know them. But mine's, mine's would stop at a hole in the ground, and if a train came past, it would belt forward. Oh, oh, <laughs> so are you, I knew it did that. Are yeah. you planning to ride next year, Liz, then? <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that a I big I think goal? the last time I did it when my daughter was, I think, about three, and I had blisters on my bottom. We asked for, <laughs> we asked for slow horses. My, one of my neighbours and I went into the ride out and we asked for slow horses, and they must have been the slowest horses on this earth. <laughs> 
you get what you ask for. Oh, you oh, get what you oh, ask God. for. It's nice when you see something that's got it's big and it's got fluffy feet, and you think, oh, that's uh-huh. fine. That's fine. Huh? That looks feel. safe. A big armchair. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. that's for me. Yeah. I was speaking to Gillian earlier, actually, um, and we were talk, talking to you when it came to, to horse riding. <laughs> she, she, she knew what she was doing. I didn't have a clue. And I'd really worked at it to try and be competent, mm-hmm. done lessons, uh, as many as I possibly could. And the first time that we rode together was Pennycook. So I've turned up at Pennycook and I was so proud that I felt as if I would get round without falling off. Yeah. So the next minute, um, our horses came out um, and again, Gillian's came first and there was this big thoroughbred chestnut type thing. And I was like, oh, I wonder what I'll get. And then, <laughs> then, <laughs> then this little white pony <laughs> appeared. Now, now for me, it made it even worse because I played football in Pennycook. Oh, no. So I don't know if if you can remember but when they come back on a Saturday it's not just the horses but it's their entire fancy dress parade right. and their fancy dress parade is, is probably as busy as ours uh-huh. um, so I can remember there was a lot of my friends who I play football where they were all out waiting on me to come in and I can remember trying to levitate trying to make <laughs> make me <laughs> looking <laughs> roughly the same height and Jillian was trying to connect go down a little bit uh, and um, oh, we've, yeah. still, we've still got some photos so they might they might appear uh, <laughs> we'll definitely have to have a look at those. And that actually brings us on nicely to, um, uh, for those that, that don't know, obviously those that are involved know, but part of being on Slam Lass is, is representing Musselburgh down the borders, border towns such as Gala Shields, Jedburgh, Hoyk, Melrose. Mm. They all have their own versions of our very own Musselburgh Festival. But 60 years ago, our Land Lass didn't just go down the borders, they went a wee bit further <coughs> afield. Can you tell us about that? Well, how that came about, uh, Louis Talamone was the mayor of Champigny and Musselburgh had twinned with Champigny that year and the town council had been across in the earlier part of the year uh, at Champigny for the ceremony, invited their town council across to Musselburgh uh, and we were the uh, honest lad and lads when, when they were there. So, during that week they were at everything, that, that, more or less that we were at, and Talamone was a French Corsica. Now he had been in the uh, underground during the war and it, 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 you could tell, just by looking at the man, that he was an operator, and he really was. Uh, and he said, we have a fair, and it was called the Fair of the Pig. <laughs> which uh, it takes pl- uh, place in November, you come across to uh, Champigny. I said, no, no, work and whatever. No money after <laughs> festival. <laughs> 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 uh, no, no, we pay, we pay. And we heard nothing after mm. that. And then about a fortnight before it, the invitation came through uh, to go to Champigny. Was it uh, just for the two of you together? Uh, for the two of us. I had never been abroad, never been on an aeroplane. Very few people of our generation had. I think I had uh, been up to Aberdeen on an aeroplane. Uh, that was oh, <laughs> 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 uh, we, f- we had to fly to uh, London and then from London, and this was where it really became difficult. Uh, we were flying to Orly Airport in Paris. And it got diverted at the last minute to La Borgia. They didn't have the big airport in Paris in these days. So uh, we were on the plane, Elizabeth's on one side of the aisle, I'm on the other side of the aisle. I'm sitting beside this guy, looking at him, saying, I know your face, I wonder (laughs) where I've met you before, you know. And he smiled very politely, and I thought, oh, I wonder where I've met him. But I was desperate to ask him, but I thought, no. When we arrived, here there's cameras, there's television. It was Herbert Wong, the film star. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. We had just taken part in El Cid with Geraldton Heston. Oh, oh wow. 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 Were you surprised that the cameras weren't there for you, George? No, <laughs> well, this is where it came <laughs> Needless to say, all the cameras left, and we left the two of us. <laughs> the actual uh, people that were due to meet us, they were at all the airport now. La oh, the other side course. of Paris. Ah. So they hadn't arrived. I've never seen an airport act as quick. 
Da, može da se najrukili i će da se... Ne, 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 and I'd been doing my training with a horse and all the rest of it. And uh, the Gallic Hills ride was on, and the weather again was wet. And the river was in spate. And it's it's a big crossing down in Gallic. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. the Esk is really small compared to this. And uh, when they were only allowing us across three or four at a time, some people said it should have been stopped, but they, of course they never stopped. So uh, when it came my turn, the guy said, look, just let the horse have its head, don't try and control it, it knows where it's putting its feet, just take your time. Look at this river, I thought, my God, you know, am I really going to cross over here? And I had a big horse, and I had a big pair of boots on, and when I got to the middle, the water was coming up over the top of my boots. That's how deep it was. So we just padded over, you know, but I, my heart was in my mouth that day. That was my first experience of a border <laughs> ride. The rest of the ride was great, galloping up Scott Street and all that sort of thing was great. The more you rode, the more your confidence grew. Yeah. And I think we used to do four and five hours rides at a time down there. Mm-hmm. And it's the camaraderie on the horse as well. It's the, 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 the banter, the sing songs, yeah. the head flask. The yes. best one was, um, I always remember it was Duns, strangely oh, enough. Gosh, that was uh, getting to Duns was bad enough, you know, Duns, over Duns, all Duns the Duns hills. Oh. Um, but it was uh, miles and miles of endless rolling hills and mm-hmm. countryside and right. you just say, where am I going? Just give the horse the head and off you, off you, you go. It was absolutely wonderful. Mm. And if I didn't have the confidence about riding a horse before done, so I had it at the end of mm-hmm. that. So it was it was fabulous. And I came off with a smile mm-hmm. on my face. <laughs> we managed we managed we to go around all the rides and oh, not yeah, come know. off, which was That's a great achievement. That was a no, first. Off, even yeah, no. even at Lauder, which has a special field there. Before the honest last one. Yeah. 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 Yes. We know it well. And <laughs> it's coming towards the very end of the of the ride and um, it's one of the last rides of the season. And it was the the very ride that my mother and father decided they would go down and um, support. Well, that was fine, <laughs> okay. And we got round the, the ride and it got a bit sort of claustrophobic a wee bit towards this field. And I, silly of course, because mm-hmm. I didn't know anything about horses, just got that wee bit too near the horse in front that had a lovely red bow right. on it. And in it, but mm-hmm. and got me in the shin and I couldn't feel anything up that side of, of uh, my body and I'm yelling to Rina that's riding away, everybody's <laughs> riding away and I'm like, oh, you know. But did you stay on? I stayed on. Well, what an because achievement. I couldn't I couldn't move. I actually needed somebody to help me get off. And so, and then I was straight into an ambulance and my mother and father were standing at the top going, oh, there's Reno and there's Margaret and there's so it's in the where's Elise? <laughs> <laughs> She's in the ambulance on the way up to the Royal. Uh, <laughs> Did you break it? The... Sorry? Did you break your leg? Uh, a big crack down it. It's not actually broken. So but you stayed so on, so what an achievement. I stayed <laughs> on. I uh, had another experience just going up, talking about the riding uh, hoik. Oh, the yeah, first time I did hoi, um, we'd been out most of the night because there's a function on at night in those days. We were way up the, the rig of the moor and you were half dead, you know. We got to bed and it must have been, oh, I don't know. That's because you sing your way through the board of towns. <laughs> Maybe you that's it. I get involved in a party yeah. and that's me. That's right. Reno loves a party. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I mean, when the morning came, uh, it was pouring a rain and it was a horrible day and I was really tired and I got up. God, here we go, I could really do without this today. <laughs> and uh, when I was going away in the hotel, I said to Lise, you're lucky that ladies don't ride at Hoyt. In those days, it was, you know, it was only the men. So I thought, gosh. So I went down into the street, stood there, you know, half asleep, and they were dishing out the horses. It's like uh, Dean's story, but opposite way around. Because they, they were coming out the horse box, they were shouting out the name, Fred Smith, right, that's your horse. Jimmy so-and-so, that's your horse. 
So I stand and wait, and I heard this thing kicking and banging. One of the boxes <laughs> banging the side, and yay! And all this, and I thought, oh, God, I'm not no getting that. <laughs> Reno de <Dinolo>. Rolo! <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, on, my on heart went down my boots. <laughs> this is it. So I got on this thing, and away we went. And I managed fine. It actually ended up with a really good ride. Mm -hmm. But that feeling of oh, dread. Oh. <laughs> we managed again. Oh. Never fell off. Never fell. <laughs> And Gillian and Dean, you obviously, you, you made a lot of really good friends down the borders. Dean, can you tell us about your experiences and the people that you met? Um, to this day, I think I said earlier that um, I've managed to hold on to all the friends that I had there. They're sort of celebrating their 25th. Again, a little bit disappointed like us, not being able to totally mm. fully go for it. But um, yeah, I've been able to, to hold on to them. Just when you were sort of talking about the, sort of the horses' stories, everybody sort of talks about hoy. And again, great weekend, um, but I always remember... It was actually riding when you were talking about Duns. And I can remember, I don't know if you did it, but we went to the Jed Ball. So yeah. the Jed Ball yeah, goes up to like, what, six in the morning? Absolutely. Yeah. So at six o'clock in the morning, then we just jumped in a car That's and right. were taken straight to Duns. So there was no, no sleeping, no sleep no, nothing at all. The same. Um, and I can remember when you're riding Duns as well, halfway <laughs> through you stop. I think it's like for about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I was with, uh, it was next to my council lad, Stevie Scott. And he had the car with him, so when we had that 45 minutes, he said, right, he goes, we'll just we'll get a quick kit. So Lisa, <laughs> Lisa, who was past last at that time, she took her horses. Uh -huh. And I can remember just putting the seats back, and then just, I guess, most of us both fell asleep. And then the next minute, there was, I could hear people shouting, and I could bangs on windows <laughs> the next minute, and then they found us in the car. Oh, no. And the entire ride was probably about <laughs> three miles that way. Oh. And myself and Stevie, we had just totally forgot about it. And poor Lisa still holding these oh, horses no. that were trying to gallop away. So it was a case of out the car, jumping back on, and chasing after. So that's that's oh, one, that's of, the, one of the memories that I'll, I'll always have. So that, that, that brings us on to our own festival. We've touched on our visits down the borders, but now it's, it's all about the muscle a festival. Now, Gillian and Dean, your main memories of that week, it's, I suppose it's like a, a kid at Christmas, isn't it, waiting for it to come? It is, it's, it's just brilliant and you're so nervous and mm -hmm. you've got so much to do and there's literally not an hour spare. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you're, you're, you've got to be somewhere all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, right from the, the Sunday morning, well, really Saturday night, because we have those lasses dinner on oh, the Saturday that's night. Right, of course. Um, right through to the, you know, the following Saturday night. But, um, it's just madness, and it it goes past in a in a blink of an eye. It's just it's it goes past so quickly. But I don't know. I mean, I, I could talk about all the events during the week, but I suppose the dinner for me was was my favourite. Um, I just I think standing on your your seat and controversially whether it it's right or wrong, all the, all the lads and lassies stand on their seats. Yeah, nice. And sing the Musbra song at the end of the dinner, and for me that was that's probably my favourite memory. I think Gillian had mentioned it there, but we spoke about it. Um, the parties we both enjoyed, the kids' parties. Um, as I said, I could go on about all the kind of events we did, but that was quite early on because I think one of ours was on the Tuesday actually. Yeah, one on the Tuesday, um, and one on the Wednesday. Also, it was at Wigfield. I always remember that being number one, <laughs> and that got played every time. Saturday I had to get up and yeah, I had to dance for that one. Um, but, to dance. But, for, love <laughs> but for every I think for every lad when it came to riding on the Monday was brilliant going across the Esk waving seeing all the family and friends but getting the flag on the Saturday that meant a lot again it was quite serious as well I don't, I don't know about you I wasn't the best sort of horseman but um, I was really I think I always remember the tip that I got is when you're going through the uh, river when you get to go under the, sort of the bridge and stuff like that lean back <laughs> Yeah, it goes, when it's right. windy and rain, when you're actually riding, mm -hmm. sort of lean forward, but do that or you'll end up leaving, <laughs> leaving right. the flag, flag sort of behind you. So. And they gave you a big horse for that, didn't they? And <laughs> they I gave, got a wee white pony. They gave, me a horse, <laughs> they gave me a horse called Hogan, I think, that would actually, if you didn't turn the horse, it would go through a wall for you. That was the only one thing. So when you're too busy waving and doing all that, you have to make sure just a quick turn at the last minute. So yeah, for me, that was not serious, but that, that, that meant a lot to me. And... What were your guys' highlights? I believe the weather wasn't great your week. Can you, you tell us about that? That definitely it's wasn't a highlight. Awful. I mean, just poured the whole week. Mm -hmm. Apart from the Kirkin, as I say. Um, on the fancy dress parade, we were dressed as cornflake pockets. Oh, well, but in those days... Kellogg's variety. Aye, Kellogg's <laughs> variety. That had been painted in, in our back garden. My father was, you know... 
painting for days, putting all the oh. cockerels in the right place and what have you. We had one for everybody. Aye. And it rained, and Reno in a soggy cardboard, cardboard box. box. And all the painting <laughs> ran all off it. Ran. it just like what a rats. mess. Oh, it's Absolutely. It was uh, pretty daft. Yeah. And it, when it came to, was it the dinner that you, you weren't actually able to wear your whites? Yeah, we, had, we were so wet in the so dinner, we had to take all the whites off and uh, there was they were going to try and dry them at a local baker's or something near the oven, but it they just wouldn't work. So we just had our suits on. But um, my father, I didn't have a suit on. No, my, you father, <laughs> my father had spent most of the week <coughs> running back and forward to the laundrette at the town hall with my whites, getting them, you know, um, washed and then big tumble dry because we didn't have a tumble dry at yeah. that stage. I don't even think we had a washing machine to be quite <laughs> honest, but there we go. <laughs> Uh, because you had to be spruce um, every single morning, set out to get wet again, and uh, on, on this went. I'm surprised I actually got into them at the end of the week, but the Saturday, being prized off the horse, the whole of my back end was brown of the saddle, mm -hmm. the front of my jacket was blue mm -hmm. from the saddle, <laughs> what a mess. And I have never spent a week like that getting wet knickers. It was just <laughs> so <laughs> wet. It was unbelievable. But did you love it? Yeah. Well, yes, because there are fabulous highlights. I remember we actually got to stand on the banks of the um, the River Esk on the Wednesday night for our sashing. And there in the cloud, you could see it coming, 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 coming. <laughs> a flash of thunder. Yeah, it That's it. Everybody into the hall. And we were the first to be sashed in the new Brenton Hall, Brenton which Hall. was wonderful. Oh, that's right, yeah. Uh, but however, doing uh, the Musselburgh Reel and ate some Reel um, in riding boots on a brand new varnished floor was yeah. not easy. It's a bit tricky, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that one. Um, there were lots of, of super duper memories. But the one thing that got my heart racing, absolutely so proud, was when the town band started up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you were either riding your horse behind it and the town band's going, or I could feel it even now just yeah. even thinking about that, mm -hmm. you know. Or going up to church on the lovely sunny day that we had, that and the, you know, behind the town's band. Mm -hmm. And coming back on the Saturday after a soggy um, ride round the, the borders, and there we are, we picked up the town's band again, and off we went through. So they're a huge integral part of mm. the festival and we should never forget them and always be grateful that we still have Toons mm. Band. Mm. Absolutely. They're absolutely super, but that, and it still to this day uh, gets my heart going and uh, I feel quite teary sometimes. That, um, but they play the same music, it's fascinating. The banner of St George, it, mm. when that comes yeah. on, and it's the same mm -hmm. as what mm -hmm. Dean has said, Every honest lad remembers the Saturday when you carry the flag. Mm -hmm. Now, I hardly slept a wink the night before yeah. because a lot of the lads were saying, make sure you carry that flag, that's our flag. And don't drop it and don't break it. And I thought, no pressure. Yeah. And no pressure. <coughs> but the day dawned and, of course, pouring and all the rest of it. But riding around that ride with one hand, it's no mean feat. You know, you've got a stirrup to take the weight down the way. And the old flag that I had, had a long, skinny pole, but... It's, it, as you say, if it gets wet, yeah, the flag gets that. heavy. Yeah. Well, this flag is drenched, you know, so it was really... George and Liz, what about yourself, 60 years ago? What, what are the memories, what are the things that stick out from your special week? I think, actually, before the Spurs Night, <coughs> uh, there was 10 at my Spurs Night. Now we're speaking about 35 mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. 36, 10. These days, the tradition was... Uh, to tie their tie in the Merkit Cross. Oh, oh dear. Uh, again, the pubs closed at 10 o'clock, so we had a, a license to live in the woodside to let all the drunks get away, not to see us mm -hmm. tie the tie. It, it was torrential rain that night, new suit on and this type of thing. <laughs> it was my 21st, I was actually 25, uh, 21 that article. You can't climb up that. Somebody produced an old green coat, off with the trousers. Mm -hmm. Perhaps Camber with this old green coat. Now I'm going to tie up the American trucks. <laughs> that was the first thing there. Uh, festival week itself, I think the experiences are the same as everybody else. Yeah. Uh, the honour of uh, carrying the flag uh, is something else. 
Oh, it's like from a male point of view. I'm sure females would like to do it as well, mm -hmm. but uh, it's a, it is a feeling. Weddings, eh? Our Sasha was uh, Chief Constable Willie Mellon. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now, this was a, how could I put it, quite a controversial figure. Mm -hmm. For a policeman, it was only five foot one, and, and you had to be five foot ten in these days, but he was a character. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember he sent, sent me all these photographs, you know, with, with the Queen and, mm -hmm. you know, and being presented to the Queen mm -hmm. and, you know, all these sort of now, photographs of himself. We're, we're, <laughs> aye, we're on the banks of the Esk, for the old, uh, <coughs> not, not where we are now. Further down. Further down. And uh, he married an American and he came away with this pun. He says, uh, my brother-in-law is always boasting the Americans that can do this bigger than you can do it here. You do this and that. And he said, I just told him and he pointed to the Roman Bridge. He says, you see that bridge there? There are millions across that every day. What, a million? Yes. There's a wire millions, the paper millions. <laughs> 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 that, that story has gone. <laughs> and then, uh, I mean, it, it really was. Well, it took the place. <laughs> really you know, oh, I like that. Uh, it really was. <laughs> um, but I, I mean, it is so lovely, and it's lovely to see everyone here today and, you know, all these years later still very much involved in the festival and and what advice would you give to anybody that is perhaps considering now standing for honest lad and lass do it do it mm -hmm. absolutely i think every single person in this table would say do it yes it's, definitely it's just a an experience that you can't replicate any other mm -hmm. way and it's, it's a lifelong experience <coughs> not, not yeah. to overthink it because uh -huh. you can't do this or you can't do that right. there is actually nothing that you can't learn to do on the job so to speak yeah so have a good bash mm -hmm. but make sure that your family and your friends you know your support group are there yeah, for you as mm -hmm. well yeah. hugely important because yeah. i think yeah. horses sometimes put people off do you know yeah. they think oh can i can't do that I but you can <laughs> and, do you know and, and you can. Yeah. there are plenty of people that yeah. are mm -hmm. yes. you know that have, willing to have help done it. Yes. And that, that absolutely are to help. Yeah. And yeah. i think the, the confidence that you get too as a young mm -hmm. person i mean public speaking that has George said mm -hmm. earlier, it's a bit of a dread for anybody, really. And mm -hmm. no matter how often you've done it, you still get a bit nervous. But uh, I, th I found that a great confidence booster, you know, being able to get up at the sashing and do your speeches mm -hmm. and the dinner and prepare them all and whatnot. I found that quite an advantage mm -hmm. in my life. And actually. I think it helps you as well, like, you know, just with your working life even. Well, exactly. You know, because nowadays you are expected to talk in front of big mm -hmm. crowds of people, crowds yeah. of people, but big numbers of people, yeah. you know, in a work environment. And That's I think, right. you know, standing up at that dinner at 18 year olds, oh, do you know, in front going. of 250 people with your, mm -hmm. your speech in your hands. I know. It, it's it's a good life lesson. It's life skills that you learn as well, you know, and you learn how to socialise with different people, as you say, people you meet from the first time you're going to stay at their house or, mm -hmm. or yeah. whatever, but it's just such a, a great experience. And and how important does everyone think it is that the Musselburgh Festival continues? Obviously, it's a, we know we all know how much work and effort the committee put into it, but how important is it for, you mentioned that your, your daughters were want, wanting to ride this year, but everybody still looks forward to that week, mm -hmm. don't they? They do. Yeah, it's, um, it, it's extremely important for all these reasons, but it become more and more difficult, I would think, mm -hmm. as Musabra expands. Exactly. It's, it's, we've got houses it's huge, uh, um, so growing spread every, everywhere, everywhere, and a lot of, um, not incomers, but new people that don't, don't know the festival. And so our big challenge now mm -hmm. is to take what we know and the history of Musabra and feed it out it. to yeah. people. Mm -hmm. and, and if Musselburgh is growing as a place, why can't Absolutely. the Musselburgh Festival grow with it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, well, and I think we, we ch must challenge ourselves mm -hmm. to, um, to do what we can mm -hmm. to use our experience, our yeah. skills and yeah. talents. I tell everybody who will listen about mm -hmm. the Musselburgh Festival. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I mean yeah. folk will say to me, oh, what's this Musselburgh it's Festival thing? Right, and I'm yeah. like, right, just have a seat. Uh, um, you can give it a while. <laughs> you can have it. Wait till you have a photo album. Uh, <laughs> well, if they watch this video, they'll soon get to know what it's all about. To finish up then, so sum up for me, Gillian and Dean, first of all, 25 years. 
been a blast. That's a good story. Yeah. It's it's been amazing. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have not wanted to have been involved at any point over the last twenty five years. At not one point I've thought, God, I really wish I'd never got involved in this. Do you know what? It really it, it it's been it's been a fab time and we've remained friends and our families are friends and I it's for me it's just been yeah brilliant. As Jillian said, we've kept again we've been close friends all the way through, like twenty five years on. Maybe you're getting a bit older as well, eh? Um, but yeah, I totally agree. I think when it gets to festival week, I love festival week. There's again, there's lads, lassies, attendants that you don't maybe only see them maybe twice a year, but it just falls into it so easily. Yeah. It's as if you just saw them yesterday. Pick up where you I love up. my Spurs night. I love uh, even like the Kirkin. Mm -hmm. uh, going to the Kirkin and going for a couple of drinks at the rugby club, Tune speaking to, and it's not even your own age group. Like I can have a chat with you know, kind of a. Uh, Chuck George and stuff like that as well it's, uh, I honestly I totally love it I really enjoy it I've tried to take part as much as I possibly can as I said before I think I've rolled every year always the Monday and Saturday starting to ache and <laughs> creak a little bit here now but um, yeah uh, as I say I've loved every minute I love keeping in touch with my uh, the people down the borders as I've said earlier but it's something that I again I'll, I'll encourage anybody to, you and I are going to do our own ride out this year. Oh, are you? We've hired two horses for the for the Monday nights. Yeah, we've had a word. <laughs> we spoke to we spoke to last week, so we're going to get like a two hour hike. Good. Good. So oh, like yourselves, we're all set, we're all going to celebrate in our anniversary. Let's just dine to join you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could so all we're, come. We could make it. We're, we're, de six. we're determined to do as much as we we're allowed to. Mm -hmm. um, and really give it a, a good bash. Brilliant. Great. And Reno and Elise, what what about you? How would you sum up fifty years? I can't well, believe it's fifty well, years. Well, that's that that's right. impossible. That's um, it does seem ridiculous. It's not right. It's fifty years. <laughs> well, I, I remember um, on the Wednesday night at the the bun fight, um, mm -hmm. uh, we gave our speeches, and I remember at the end of mine, I said something like, "It was really interesting after twenty five years." Um, <laughs> that because we still felt like 18 at that time or 20 and 20 21 Gee. um i said to see that with both wearing specs you know that time marches on <laughs> and the body marches on as well <laughs> and something um what else did i say to you that you must be careful with all these machines that you drive and what have you because <laughs> i wanted to be standing at the same place and 2021 oh, yeah. and right. here we are 2021 sitting around the that's table right. and you're still, still here well done I'm still there. That's, that's <laughs> very cool. glasses on. and he's still wearing glasses uh -huh. what about yourself you know 50 years uh, sum it up i just like what you said i can't believe it's 50 years no. it doesn't feel like 50 years but when you look back over all the experiences we had well there is a lot of water under the bridge but we did enjoy it we've remained friends throughout the whole time and as elise said our families now our, our own children it was a good story about that. Twins, yeah. are you going to tell that story? Oh, right, okay. Very, very, very quickly. Um, one of the things we did as, as lad and lass, we were invited all over the place, you know, as, as you are. Um, but I was the first on Slath in the street that I stayed in, in West Holmes Gardens. And one of the, um, the residents was uh, Dr. Gibson Aiken, stayed at the end of the street. He never, was never interested or involved in the festival at all, but was terribly uh, interested in the fact that I had been voted in as honest last. So he invited both Reno and I to tea one afternoon. And, oh, that's very nice. So he was a teacher at the grammar, wasn't he? He was, he was head of chemistry uh -huh. at uh, the grammar school. A learned man. So, and he had, he never married, but been all over the world, you know, so he, he had a house full of um, bits and pieces and relics and Delicious. things he had gathered over the, his years of travelling. And we had our tea, and he says, but before you have your tea, he says, I've got glasses here, and he says, I, I would like to raise a toast to you. So I said, oh, right, okay. And so he poured... Um, he put well, it was wine or something, I think, mm -hmm. into this horn. Mm -hmm. That's strange. He really wants to drink out of that. So we pretended we sipped, you know, uh, this oh, drink totally. out of. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a rhino horn, actually, Ooh. that he had yeah. picked up somewhere, uh, and so that was that. And he turned and he said, "Now, 
Um, where that was from someplace in Africa, it's a sign of great fertility. <laughs> and uh, it happens so um, this is for the rest of your life. And we know what Pacific got that. <laughs> but actually, once I had my twins and he had his twins, mm -hmm. it actually clicked <laughs> in my head. It's amazing. And Reno and Margaret said, isn't it strange that we both had twins? I said, no. <laughs> we knew. You can tell Reno. <laughs> really? You can tell I was Reno, surprised. You can tell Reno drank more because he, he didn't stop after that. <laughs> another two more than that. that. <laughs> <laughs> Reno was just to see on the commuter line <laughs> from the camping. I, I, I know why that. that is. He says, why is that? I said, I'll tell you on the 25th. But she wouldn't she, tell me because I'd forgotten. I waited 20, 25 years to let that story out <laughs> that we had both uh, drunk from the rhino horn and warning all honest lasses from that day <laughs> forward Don't to drink the drinks out of glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and of course, 60 years ago, I mean, 60 years, can you sum that up for us? Well, uh, there was uh, remain friends, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I think it's quite nice that we're both here. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well done on both of you. It doesn't yeah. happen yeah. very often. It doesn't, yeah. you're right. As far as riding's concerned, uh, I really, until I was 60, uh, but I took a heart attack. And, uh, Not on the horse, I hope. No, but I thought if I'm up uh, before, well, it was at the very start to mobile phones, I thought. If I have another heart attack up at four side, I'll mm. never make it. So uh, <laughs> I decided no. I, I, was just, uh, I think you did really well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Margaret, my wife, was the same. Yeah. She, mm -hmm. she rode the year yeah, after the last mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But uh, the things that you put aside to a certain extent, foreign holidays are big things nowadays. But if you're keen on riding, as we were, and you're paying for horses, it takes a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, to put the whole family now, my son and my daughter all came through it uh, and uh, I think it's a commitment of being able to do that that has made the festival for me. If I hadn't had the right side of it, mm -hmm. I don't think my enthusiasm would be as strong as it is. Mm -hmm. So that shows you from not really riding before it to uh, taking part and, and really uh, enjoyed every minute yeah. Yeah. but your love of horses of course yeah. and your wife's love of horses right. passed on to your son who then went on to be a, a very successful horseman and, oh, yeah, and yeah. his involvement in the queen's troop as yeah. well wasn't yeah. it well yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> there's a story there <coughs> he uh he never managed to ride up very often because of his own duty but anyway he got involved one festival and uh, they were coming into the race course. Now he had made, made <coughs> for breakfast, he had met um, Murray Weird, Brian Monks. And, uh, I think you uh, say no more then. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> Robert Biggie. Great so it was a liquid breakfast. I can imagine. <laughs> coming up the race course, uh, on the back side out there's a bad drain that you've got to watch but it hadn't been itemised in his first rain down and he came up not up but came up Murray Laird won the on his lad's race uh, that night so to speak at the dinner to get to his presentation and uh, he, he said the, oh yes he says we were out with a rider today and really super rider he says uh, I don't know what happened he probably jumped off but if you saw his breeches like I did he says uh, he had a real laugh because he was behind him saying I thought he was a rider <laughs> <laughs> just shows you you have to everybody does come off a horse once yeah. I came off of the race course that's the only time at the race course. Yep. I, did, yeah. I did try and stop and come back to you. Well, my and horse just got on the race course and thought, no, um, this, is a, this is a race course. I'm not having you on my back. Uh, <laughs> no. And then you've got the two non horse riders who never came off. And so I it just shows you. I won the Honest Lads race too in 73. You won it in 73? Do you think that you. I won the Honest Lads race. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. 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 What year was that? I, I, I don't. What year was it? The year I was on the Oh, fantastic. Brilliant. Do you know what I 
I was on I wasn't on my own horse. Somebody put me on a race horse. Yeah. And I'd probably be like on. this and shut my eyes. And I, I, I won quite a bit of money actually. Like. <laughs> but, um, I think I think um, really sort of right. it, but I think you socialise when you're socialising is most when you're actually on a horse. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, going to because yeah. you, you'll yeah. you'll you'll think it's the balls and, mm-hmm. and all that. But no, you meet your friends no, when horses. you're on your horse. You have your sing songs. Yeah, it's when you have your sing songs. Yeah. You'll share a, so, a drink or whatever, and it's right. mm-hmm. so less sixty years of. Of pure bliss and happy yes. memories. Yes, just lots of happy memories. Absolutely. Well, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure taking a trip down memory lane with you all today. Thanks to you all for coming. Thanks to New Hales House um, for hosting us here, a lovely venue in the Honest Tune. And here's to many more Musselboro festivals over the years and many more Honest Lads and Lassies. And we hope to see you all back in person for our normal, wonderful festival next year. Thank you. Thanks, Lori. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you. For Musselboro was a borough when Edinburgh was named. And Musselboro will be a borough when Edinburgh